this is Joe Ancola with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. And today I'm in my beautiful garden. Man, I got so many greens around me. I love just greenery, man. And, uh, you know, as you guys know, my channel is called Growing Your Greens. If you didn't know that, you know now. And that's because I'm really into growing my greens. And more importantly than just growing them, man, is eating them. In my opinion, Americans are vastly deficient in leafy green consumption and this is not not just me talking i mean there's statistics that say the per capita consumption of the average american of leafy greens is a quarter pound per year on kale <laughs> so the average person needs a quarter pound of kale a year i mean if you buy a bag of kale chips you could get probably about a quarter pound of kale that's been dehydrated you know and I want to encourage you guys to even eat more than that. My goal every day is to eat two pounds of leafy greens a day. And you know, I want to, I want to bring power back to the people and, uh, and teach you guys how to grow your own food so you can be more sustainable, but more importantly for me, more healthy because you know, health is what it's about for me. So in this episode today, I'm not going to share with you guys how to grow your greens. I have plenty of videos on that. I'm going to share with you guys my favorite way by far to use your greens. So if you are already growing your greens, and you're one of those people that's not eating enough of them, you know, you really want to pay attention in this episode to really learn my favorite way and best way to get some greens in you so that you can derive the health benefits that, that's contained with, within all these amazing plants. So uh, here behind me, I got some uh, beautiful Swiss chard going to flower and bolting. So, you know, no matter what stage your plant is in, you can always harvest the leaves. Even if they are bolting, they t kind of tend to get a bit stronger, but that's all right. And then uh, actually right below me here, you guys can't see in the picture, I have a little container. And uh, next to the container, I got some, man, this stuff's tough. I got some little baby uh, chard that actually is a volunteer. So I'm picking my volunteers too. They're getting juiced up. And then uh, of course, right here, we have some beautiful collard greens. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pick a few leaves off this. Now, the thing is when you're picking leaves to juice, your juicer doesn't care what the leaves look like. They could have big bug holes, you know, uh, generally, I like to pick the ones on the bottom of the plant, leave the ones near the top of the plant, which is like the growth tip area, leave them to grow and to be bigger. You know, for juicing, we want the largest leaves that are going to provide the most amount of juice, although there's not a lot of juice in a leaf, so you're going to have to pick a whole bunch of them. Wow, that one's kind of tough. Yeah, that one's got some bug holes because I do grow organically. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on to another area and pick some more greens. All right, so as you guys can see, I'm next to some more of my favorite greens. These are actually called the tree collards. So I'm actually standing up tall, not bending over, and these guys are just about at my height. So we're gonna go ahead and pick some of these uh, delicious, beautiful tree collards here to go in my juice. Now, one of the things I recommend is you guys might wanna get a harvest basket. This is actually a nice harvest basket here, or just uh, basically it's a plastic, uh, bowl with holes in it so it can be hard to find these guys especially for an inexpensive price i like to rinse all my vegetables you know that i harvest you know over the garden so all the water goes in the garden and not down the sink uh, after i'm done harvesting and uh, these bowls can be found at like asian stores so specifically like korean markets if you have any near you uh, they use these bowls for i don't know some kind of food preparation but uh, they're inexpensive i mean it's like three bucks for this nice huge large bowl that I could fit all my greens in for juicing. So if you guys are noticing, you know, I'm harvesting a variety of different leafy green vegetables. I'm not just harvesting all Swiss chard or all kale. I'm getting like one or two leaves off every plant. This is gonna do two things. Number one, if I harvested like a ton of leaves off this plant, it wouldn't be able to grow back as quickly. Uh, the other thing it's gonna do, it's gonna vary the different nutrients I'm getting. Each different plant, whether it's the, you know, kale or collard greens, is gonna absorb different nutrients from the soil. Plus, they have different phytochemicals and phytonutrients in the food that are very beneficial for us. Some of the phytochemicals that are in the uh, cruciferous family have been shown to help uh, prevent and fight cancer, you know, from some of the studies that I've read. Now, another thing you guys can do is on your broccoli and cauliflower leaves. You know, broccoli and cauliflower is grown for the flower part of the plant. You know, whether it's that tight broccoli head or the cauliflower head, you know, after you're done, you're going to get what's what's right here you know I cut off the head and now I got all these leaves that are still left over you know these leaves should not be composted because a better use than composting your leaves is actually to harvest some of these uh, cauliflower leaves and uh, put them in your juice so we're gonna pick a couple off this uh, 
cauliflower plant that got harvested but still has got some of these nice green leaves. Now these green leaves, you know, they are related to kale and collard greens and taste similar and have very uh, similar nutrition as well. And so I like to include all of my different leafy greens so I can get a wide variety of different leaves in me. So besides the greens I'll be juicing today, I also like to include some roots in my juice. And one of my favorite ones are right here. It's actually the beets. We're gonna pull these guys up right here, at least one of these guys. Ugh, come on out, beet. I'm gonna beat you up. <laughs> All right, there we go. We have one nice little small beet. You know, I don't like juicing a lot of beet. It adds a strong flavor to the juice. Definitely rich in uh, nutrients there. We're gonna pull off some of these outer leaves here that are not so good. But the other thing I wanna recommend and encourage you guys to do is you can actually also juice the, uh, the beet greens here. They're quite edible. They're related to spinach and Swiss chard. But more importantly than just the greens of the beets and besides the root itself, I want you guys to juice this nice, rich, colorful stalk. The stalk is really rich in red pigments you know, something that the uh, the beet root has, but the leaves don't have as much of. You know, it's these pigments, the different colors in food that in my opinion are so beneficial for us. And there's not even research on a lot of these different antioxidants that are contained within these colorful foods. So for the best health, eat a wide variety of foods and include all the rich colors in the beet stalks. So besides all the leafy greens that I'll be juicing today, I'm also gonna juice some herb. No, 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 not that kind of herb. If I was growing it, I would be juicing it. <laughs> it's really good juiced, actually. I wanna encourage you guys to juice your medicinal herb leaves. But I don't have any of that stuff growing, so what I'm gonna juice today instead is some herbs that I have, literally, that are growing as a weed, right? And this stuff is like taking over the bottom of my uh, permaculture style raised bed that I have perennials here in. And uh, what we got is the ground cover, and what we're looking at here is the mint. This stuff grows really fast, and it's also excellent to put in a vegetable juice. It'll give you that minty flavor, but also may give you that minty fresh breath after you're done uh, making the juice, and then you'll be ready to kiss your significant other if you got somebody. So the leaves that I'm most abundant in right now are my Swiss chard leaves. As you guys can see, my plants are going to flower. I've been uh, systematically cutting them, some of them back so I can uh, actually get a little bit more leaf growth before actually I gotta pull up these guys. So uh, we're just gonna go ahead and harvest a bunch of uh, Swiss chard leaves for my juice. Now, you know, I always prefer when I can, like if the plant's bolting and I'm gonna cut them out real soon, like in the case of the Swiss chard, I'm gonna harvest all the little small baby leaves because they're gonna juice a lot easier and they're gonna be a lot more mild flavor. And wow, I could really smell the uh, Swiss chard pollen right now at this time. I think I'll get back to harvesting some more Swiss chard. Then we're gonna head over to the juicer and show you guys how to juice this up. And my favorite juicer for juicing the leafy greens in, from your garden. So now we're ready to juice in the garden. I got literally a pound of leafy greens here in the bowl that you guys saw me pick. Now besides just the leafy greens, cause you could make a straight leafy green juice, but it'd be about a cup of juice with a pound of leafy greens approximately depending on the juice you're using. It's gonna taste pretty hardcore. So I'm gonna delight, dilute that down a little bit. And what I'll be doing to dilute it down, we're gonna be using two pounds of cucumbers and uh, two pounds of the pears. So the cucumbers will add a nice watery flavor, kinda of dilute that stuff down. The pears will add a nice sweetness. Now if you don't have the cucumbers, you could also use something like the celery or zucchini to juice, and I'll have some zucchini really soon. I'll be juicing from my garden. And uh, instead of the pears, you could also use the apples, which will make it a little bit sweeter as well. Now, the main reason why I'm juicing my leafy greens is to get the maximum nutrition out of them and get them into me. You know, we are not like built like a cow that like chews his cud and regurgitates it and has three stomachs or whatever. You know, so we're not very efficient at extracting the nutrients out of the leafy greens unless you literally chew it into a mush, you know. And that's where I like the juicer. What the juicer does, it literally you know, does all the work for us. You know, so if you think of what we eat, you know, say I was gonna eat this pear, I eat it, you know, after I eat it, what happens? Well, we absorb the nutrition from it, but then out one side of me comes the liquids and the backside comes the solids, which in my opinion should all be composted. But aside from that fact, you know, we are nothing more or less than juice extractors. We're literally separating out the liquids and the fiber. And that's what the juicer does. We're gonna put the, the pear in the top here, out of the front <laughs> instead of out of the back 
comes the fiber and out of the bottom instead of the front comes the liquids and it's the juice of the fiber that feeds you is what Jay Cordich formerly known as the juice man you know has told me uh, when I learned about juicing back in the 1990s and uh, you know juicing is so important to literally get all the nutrition out of the greens and get them into you the best way so that you'll have the most amount of nutrition out of the greens going into you. Uh, this includes things like the vitamins, the minerals, more importantly the phytochemicals and the phytonutrients that I'm uh, you know, such a believer in. So uh, with that, what I need to do now is I need to give you guys a disclaimer, is my real job by day is actually I sell juicers. You know, so I sell this very juicer here. I sell a wide range of juices. I sell all the high-end brand juicers. I also have many videos on YouTube comparing the juicers side by side so that you can determine which one is the best for you. The one I'm using today is the Omega NC800. The Omega NC800 by far is the best juicer hands down for maximizing the nutrition and the yield out of the leafy greens because it runs at a slow 80 RPMs and because it has a horizontal auger screw that literally crushes and squeezes out cold press style the nutrition out of the greens. There's nothing that I've tested to date that has actually been able to beat it with the uh, yield from the leafy greens. And I also do sell many other kinds of juicers, you know, vertical juicers and all this kind of stuff. And those are more general purpose juices for juicing like everything. So, you know, the strong point of this machine is that it'll really juice the greens well. Doesn't do super good with fruits when you're juicing them alone, but when you're juicing the fruits with the vegetables, it's gonna do great. And so if you want to juice more of a balanced stuff, then you'd want to go maybe with a vertical juicer. And be sure to check my website, discountjuicers.com, you know, uh, for videos on the comparing the different juicers. And if you're looking for appliances such as the juicers, the blenders, or the dehydrators, I would encourage you guys to check out my website, discountjuicers.com, and support me because that is my day job. That is what pays my bills. And at present time, it's actually a little bit slower time of year for me. Uh, so the good news is I have a lot more time to garden. And you know, it allows me to make these gardening videos for you guys, you know, and I, I put these guys up free of charge and I invest so much time of my life to do this. But I think it's, it's a very important mission that I'm on is to, you know, teach other people about eating healthy, growing their own food, which, you know, my opinion will only increase your health. And in my opinion, your health is your greatest wealth. So anyways, with that, let's get into juicing. Super simple, super easy. Another reason why I like the NC800 is because it is super simple, easy to clean. You take this whole piece off here and you just have a few parts to clean. You have this little end cap here. You have a screen and you have an auger to clean when you're done. This takes me under two minutes to clean. One of the big problems uh, when people buy a juicer is that they don't like cleaning the juicer. This by far is the easiest juicer to clean. If you can't clean this, Maybe you should just go down to Starbucks or Jamba Juice and buy your juice. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to assemble this guy up uh, real quick here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get juicing. Now, this is also very quiet. I like it a lot. And when juicing, you're always going to want to rotate the produce you're putting in. So, for example, we could put one of these nice collard leaves in and put it right in. No pre-cutting of any leafy green is uh, required when juicing in the NC800. As long as things will fit in the feed chute, such as these small cucumbers, you can just push these in as well. Now you never want to use a knife or any other tool to push the produce into the machine. You're only going to want to include the uh, use the included pusher here. If you put anything else in the machine, it may damage the machine. So as you guys can see what this juicer literally is doing, it's the juice extractor. It's literally extracting the liquids, you know, from the fiber. And Many people don't know this, but inside our bodies, you know, foods need to be in a liquid state for our little villi. It's like little cilia hairs like in our nose, right? And as the, the food goes through the intestines, through the little villi, the villi absorbs the nutrition out of the liquid state. So if you're not chewing your food to mush, then you're not gonna get optimal digestion. And that's why like the juicer, it breaks down everything for you so that your body you know, does not have to work as hard and ex expel all that energy to digest your food. Ever think about after a big Thanksgiving meal, man, you eat the food, you're supposed to have a ton of energy, but after a Thanksgiving meal, right, you kind of get tired, man. You're just kind of like, whoa, because you usually eat usually more than you normally do. But, you know, that's because your body, it's stealing energy from you now, you know, to live, to digest your food. So you get tired, you want to rest, right? Juicing's the exact opposite end of the scale. 
it gives you the most amount of energy because the juicer's doing all the hard work for you and all you gotta do is open up and drink. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and continue juicing uh, some of the different things and we'll be back at you in a little bit when I uh, juice some cool stuff. All right, check it out. These are the beet stalks, you know, that I took out that I love to juice. Now many juicers will not juice beet stalks effectively. Some juicers may kick out whole big chunks of beet stalks whole without getting a lot of juice. Those are like the centrifugal ejection style machines. And some juicers, if you put these nice large beet stalks in, it would actually clog up the ejection port. So then pretty much you'd have to stop and empty the juicer out and clean it before you start again. This is not an issue with the Omega NC800. Literally it's cranking that stuff out, squeezing all the red liquid out of it, man, those phytochemicals that I'm after, and it's uh, kicking out the pulp on the other end. I'm now starting to juice the pears here. Once again, it's best to rotate the produce as you're putting it in. We put some greens, and now we're putting a pear, then we'll put some more greens, and then we'll follow it with another cucumber. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and juice that little beet. It won't fit in the feed chute, so we're just gonna go ahead and cut this little baby in, in half. And check that out, man, nice, rich color in there. Nutrient dense grown beet dropped right in the machine. We're gonna use that pusher, push it down a little bit. Check it out, that beet's getting juiced up and instantly the juice coming out the bottom, turning that nice, dark, rich red color. Some people in sports nutrition now are saying, you know, drink the beet juice because it increases your athletic performance. I just like to drink them because it makes me feel healthy. All right, next thing going in, you guys didn't see me pick this stuff. This is actually called uh, lamb's quarters. So, you know, as long as it's a food that's edible in general, you can juice it. So the lamb's quarters are coming up as a weed right now in my garden. And guess what? If it's something I don't necessarily want, I'll pluck it instead of composting it. It's gonna go in my juicer so that I could benefit me instead of my compost pile. So I'm continuing to juice, and although this is my recipe today, this is actually quite an ad advanced recipe. Many of you guys, especially if you're starting out juicing, you probably wouldn't want to juice one pound of leafy greens with all this stuff, it's gonna taste far too strong for you. So you might want to do is juice a whole bunch of uh, pears and apples and cucumbers and some celery or zucchini, and then start out with like a quarter pound of leafy greens and taste it. See how that tastes for you. If it tastes good, great, keep it up. Then try to increase that uh, quarter pound to like, I don't know, half a pound. See how that tastes for you. If it's starting to taste too rough, back it down, back off the leafy greens, because the leafy greens is what really makes it taste strong and what many people really object to. You know, I've been doing this for many years now, so I love the taste of green juice. And you know, one of the things you're gonna notice is once you start drinking the green juice, right, you're gonna wanna drink less coffee, you're gonna wanna drink less of the crappy stuff because you're gonna feel so good on the green juice, you can't believe, you know, how you ever went on without it. And then you're gonna get addicted to juicing and like maybe even own more than one juicer like I do. So that you'll be ensured that you'll be able to get your green juice every day because it will make a positive impact in your life. Um, you know, many customers have written me and, and shared with me, you know, how juicing has literally changed their life, gave them more energy, helped them to lose weight, and more importantly, become healthier because of juicing, you know, with these uh, fabulous juice machines and the produce out of your garden. All right, so it looks like we're kind of getting full on our little catch cup. We're gonna go ahead and turn this machine off empty this out before we go on and check out this pulp man this pulp is beautiful stuff right here now this pulp it's not going to get thrown out i don't throw any organic matter away in my place it goes in my compost pile if you had worms even better the worms love this stuff because it's already pre-broken down another thing i will do with certain pulps not always depending on what i'm juicing is actually mix it in with my dog food so my dog gets additional fiber and uh, you know nutrients that are still left in this pulp. Although this pulp is still fairly dry, you know it's there's still some nutrition in there, right? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and take away our juice, put the little pulp catch below the juicer so we don't get any drips, and we're gonna take a, a strainer and a nice glass uh, pitcher here. We're gonna pour this juice through the sieve. So I like doing this a lot because, you know, I don't like a texture in my juice. There's no problem. You could drink the juice out of here if you don't mind some texture. But these style machines tend to make a fair bit of pulp in the juice. And uh, I don't want that pulp in my juice. So we're just pouring this through here and just going to shake this guy down so we could uh, empty this little 
a collection cup out and then uh, continue juicing. I'm just gonna go ahead and move this to the side, let this continue to strain out. While I'm juicing more stuff, looks like we got about half of the stuff juiced. We'll probably make a few more cups, let this stuff strain out, and guess what? This is my lunch, and I'm getting quite hungry at this point. All right, I want to show you guys this. Check this out. Here's a, like one of those uh, beet leaves. We'll just throw it in there and check it out. Man, this machine literally sucks that little beet leaf in there, crushes and squeezes out all the juice that I'll be able to collect in the collection cup right below, so I get some of that good nutrition into me. Let's go ahead and cut up more of these pears. Now, it's important on pears and apples, you know, to uh, remove the stem. You don't want to be juicing this. It'll actually cause some backup in the juicer. If you do it once in a while, not a big deal, but I prefer to be optimal and not juice stems whenever I remember and whenever possible. So I'm just about done juicing in the Omega NC800. Just got, let's see, a few pears left. We're gonna go ahead and drop these babies in there. We're gonna go ahead next uh, drop in our leafy greens. Once again, I really love how it just sucks in these beet greens right in the machine. Next we have Swiss chard leaf. Let's again duck, dunk that right in there and let's see if we're gonna get pushed in. All right, finally we got our last and lonely cucumber. He needs to get juice right up. We're gonna use the cucumber to push down the pear and the greens. And look at that, this is what was left of the greens you just saw going there. I mean, this is just Nice and dry, barely any juice left in here. Nice and efficient. One of the cool things about the Omega NC800 is that it has a 15 year warranty. So literally, what this means to you is that you're gonna just buy the juicer once, and you know, for the next 15 years, you're guaranteed that you'll be able to be juicing your leafy greens in this machine. You know, I definitely really believe, no matter you're buying gardening products or products for your home, that products have good long warranties. In my opinion, a lot of the products being sold today are cheap disposable items, especially like the, the cheap inexpensive juicers at your big box store. They literally have a 90 day warranty. They're throw out juicers after you know a couple months or a year of using it. You gotta chuck it because they're broken, not working anymore. Not so when you pay for a good brand juicer like the Omega NC800, 15 years this thing is guaranteed for. Now think about it. If you had an iPhone that had a 15 year warranty and you would get automatic free upgrades every time they came out with a new one. Well, I don't know that Omega is gonna upgrade you when the new juicer comes out, but this is the state of the art technology and I don't know how this thing could get much better at this point. All right, so anyways, looks like we're about done juicing. This is all the cucumber pulp that just came out. We're gonna go ahead and turn this baby off, uh, slide this little juice collection cup out and put our pulp catch container there. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and strain off the rest of the juice and get all the fiber out. All right, looks like we got all the pulp strained out. This is the pulp left over from the last uh, uh, juice pitcher that we uh, put in there. We're gonna go ahead and set this on top of the machine so it doesn't drip everywhere. Next, I'm gonna get to taste that juice for you guys, let you guys know what I think about it. So here's our juice we made. Probably made, I don't know, seven cups worth. Got a nice uh, 24 ounce mason jar. I love these mason or ball jars. Look at that, nice delicious green juice coming right up, nice and filtered with my additional strainer. Mmm. Wow. You, you know the green is there, right? But because I added so much cucumber and so much pear, it tastes good, it, kinda t it tastes pretty neutral, man. So this is a pretty good green juice. <laughs> of course, your results may vary, and some of the tips I want to give you guys when making any kind of green juice is Use a minimum amount of ingredients, you know, leafy greens, for the most part, I count as one ingredient. Then I have the pears and the cucumber. So I had three ingredients. In general, my juices are less than six ingredients, and normally I try to keep them around three or four at the most. And besides just uh, having a mixture of greens like I did today, like one day if I have like a lot of Swiss chard, I might just do Swiss chard with uh, cucumbers and pears, and the next day I might do collard greens with the pears and the cucumbers. You know, and I'll rotate each day all through my different greens because different greens have different, you know, anti-nutrients in there, which are actually the plant's protection against the bugs. And, you know, so for example, some greens have oxalic acid. You know, uh, some greens have goitrogenous compounds. So I don't want to get like, only drink kale juice every day, man. John said it's good. No, I'm not saying that, man. While kale juice is good, you, we really need to rotate the greens of all the different families 
including wild greens, wild edible greens, you know, to get different nutrition in us. I mean, this juicer will even juice grass. You know, normally they juice wheat grass, but you could even juice your front lawn, provided you grow organically. This will extract the nutrition out of your your grass. Yeah, more than one kind of grass too, if you get my drift. In any case, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Once again, my name is John Cole. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, drink the rest of my green juice made fresh in my garden with the Omega NC800 juicer. If you're interested in learning more about the juicers, please visit my other website, discountjuicers.com. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Please give me a thumbs up if you did, if I should do more food prep videos like this to share with you guys how I use my greens, because actually I'm far better versed in that than growing them, believe it or not. Uh, once again, my name is John Kohler with growingyourgreens.com. We'll see you next time. And remember, keep on growing.